Regina Syriac has a plan. She is terminally ill, but won't let it get her down, even if the oxygen machines get on her nerves. And here's my nif, here's my nif device. Would you like a demonstration? Yes, please. I have to turn that off. I need this because it controls my CO2 levels. COPD patients like me, we can breathe in, but not enough of the used up air comes out. That's what makes us feel breathless. I have to wear this for at least six hours a night. Regina has end-stage COPD, an incurable lung disease where the alveoli are destroyed, a process that takes years. Regina has only 20% lung capacity and it's decreasing. She can hardly do anything without supplementary oxygen. Well, for me, it's always stressful because I'm claustrophobic. And when you have something constantly so close to your face, it's unpleasant. But vital. Excuse me? But vital. The voice you hear in the background is Martina Bukatz, Regina's end-of-life companion. She is part of a voluntary service organized by the Malteser International Relief Organization. Before Regina, the former tax official accompanied more than a dozen people in their dying process. When I talk to my children about it, they leave the room. Then I say, I'm sorry for you. A lot of people distance themselves from you. How should I deal with it? Can I laugh with them at all or make a joke? With me you can. That's right. Regina's conversations with Martina allay her fear of dying. She's experienced it close up, and I get a sense of what's in store for me. It gives me courage. The topic isn't difficult. What's difficult is what people make of it. You can be very relaxed about it. We talk about everything. That's not possible with everyone, but with Regina, it works wonderfully. The two also talk openly about the funeral. In an urn, in a steel. Yes, the women at the funeral home were saying they're on the increase. What, really? I'd like to be scattered in the mountains. That would be important for me. And a big party, but not a death party. A life party. All my friends should celebrate life and not death. That's what I'd want. It's become a friendship. Take care, stay healthy, say hi to your partner, and thanks for everything. Thanks for coming, and I look forward to seeing you again. Feel hugged. Bye, sweetie. Martina's home. She's looking for a picture of her first husband. He's the reason she works today as a companion to the dying. She accompanied him with no support until he died. There was no one you could talk to about dying, about death, or anyone to answer your questions. What happens next? What do I have to do? What's it all about? It was difficult to find someone. And at some point, I came across the Malteser Agency. I read about the job and thought, yes, I'd like to take it on. Martina did a nine-month training with the relief agency as a companion for the dying. There she learned to keep a professional distance. But with Regina, that's not easy. She's such a warm-hearted person, fully aware of her situation, but also so positive. She gives me energy. I'm baffled about where she gets it from. But it's so nice. It's a pity we didn't get to know each other some other way. But the great thing is that we've met it all. Back at Regina's a few weeks later, she lives with her husband in an attic flat in Berlin. It's a huge effort to even get out the door. Her husband helps her. 
and now I can move the lever here. Then I have to move to the next step and move the lever again. It takes forever for them to make it down the three floors to the bottom. <laughs> Regina can only walk short distances. The trip to the bench in front of the house is something special for the 67-year-old. She's been married to her husband for 40 years and can rely on him and their two children. But discussing her death as openly and casually as with Martina is not possible. Yeah. Martina is already waiting in the kitchen. Today the question is whether Regina will soon be going to a hospice, a home specially for the dying. And in the nursing homes they say we can't take on the palliative patients too. Most of them can't even pay for such a nursing home anyway. That's the reality. And a palliative hospice is fully covered by the health insurance. You know, I said, if I'm capable of choosing one, if I still have some control of my senses, wonderful. Others do Sunday outings, and I say, let's go see a hospice. That's right. <laughs> the outing takes place two months later, at the beginning of December. Welcome. Are we the first hospice you're looking at? Yeah. Okay. It has to feel right. So I have to see the house. And this one's bright, it's friendly, it appeals to me. Her husband Wolfgang supports her and accompanies her to disappointment. Though he'd prefer Regina to stay at home. But his wife has a mind of her own and has talked everything through with her end-of-life companion. But after several discussions, also with my Malteser companion, I decided to keep my family out of the foreground. I don't think it's so great for them to see their mother leave the flat on her own feet. In Germany, the costs for the hospice are covered by the health insurance companies. These homes specialize in accompanying dying people around the clock and making the end as easy as possible. That used to be my fear of dying, COPD suffocation. But they've done away with that fear. They said you don't need to be afraid. You'll be sedated enough and at some point you simply cross over. It's helped me incredibly, and I'm counting on it. <laughs> Christmas and New Year's Eve are over, and Regina is still at home. Her painkillers have been readjusted, and she is feeling a little bit better. But the move to the hospice is still Regina's priority. She loves her family, but she also wants to think of herself. My daughter's always traveling around the world, and she said she no longer dared to live her life. So that, of course, put me on high alert. And that's what I said. It's the last thing I want, that you don't live your life. Everybody knows how it's going to end with me. But I want to have the right, when the time comes, to leave without having to worry about whether or not you'll get back from the Amazon just in time. February and Regina's condition is still stable. She has moved into the living room. Here is my new nursing bed. I've changed my location. Everything's a bit brighter, a bit friendlier. I can also have visitors here. Everything's wonderful. And her husband is just a push of a button away. This is my James Bell. The self-employed programmer now works from home so that he can always be reached. He's putting off moving to the hospice for now. I've actually seen that she can manage quite well at home if you help her. And then I'd rather have her here than being alone all day and only going to visit her. I can also accept that I'm no longer treated as the husband, but as James, the servant. You also get pocket money. 
About two weeks after this visit, Regina dies suddenly, as gently as she had wished for. Martina hears about it on the phone. She'd actually been waiting for a message from Regina. This debt hits the end-of-life companion particularly hard. I've been doing this job for many years, and unfortunately, it always ends in death. But this experience was still different, very different. It feels like a friend has died. It's raining on the day of Regina's farewell party. Martina wears a party outfit, just as Regina had wished. We have Regina weather too. It's the first thing I thought. She's happy. There's no sun. Did Regina not like the sun? No, because she couldn't go outside. So she'd say, then I don't want nice weather either. If the sun shone in the morning, she'd get up grumpy. <laughs> Loud, bustling, colorful, that's how we agreed it should look, and that's exactly how it turned out. Widower Wolfgang lets Regina officially open the party, posthumously. All my friends should celebrate life and not death. That's important to me. And at Easter, the family fulfills Regina's last wish. She wanted her ashes to be scattered in the Swiss mountains. Her daughter Svenja, who lives in Switzerland, organized it. So, so it's done. Mum's resting place is here. Near Hinterbergen, on Mount Rigi, with this wonderful view of Lake Lucerne. We've done it. All is well and the sun is shining.